I brought TNA Wrestling back from the dead again. Now, before we get in, I think we should give some context as to what is going on in this story arc. I'm gonna try to sum up the background on this whole Immortal storyline in like 15 seconds. So let's go. Hulk Hogan made his debut in January 2010. After three months or so, Abyss would turn on Hulk Hogan and he would proclaim that they are coming on 10-10-10. 10-10-10 was Bound for Glory 2010. In the main event, Jeff Hardy turned heel by aligning himself with Hulk Hogan, Eric Bischoff, and the rest of them, and would form the faction known as Immortal. So, this is taking place after 10-10-10. Let's get into it. So, our first pay-per-view, our first event is TNA Genesis. Our first match is for the tag team titles. The Motor City Machine Guns are back as they take on Immortal, who is represented by... Um, Bully Ray and Scott Steiner. Alex Shelley is able to tag in. He hits a sliced bread onto uh, Bully and pin him. Steiner barely got any showtime, and Bully just got bullied. Man, that was the lamest joke I think I've ever done. Holy shit. Our second match is for the X Division title as Amazing Red defends his championship that he's fought tooth and nail to keep over the past year against the Monster Abyss of Immortal. Now you may be thinking, um, actually, it's the X Division, why is Abyss allowed in the match? Well, little Timmy, it's because it's not about weight limits, it's about no limits, so Abyss can get in. This match was a f***ing killer match, honestly. Putting, you know, a giant like Abyss and Amazing Red together made magic. But in the end, Abyss hit the Black Hole Slam for the second time on Amazing Red, and shocking everyone, Abyss becomes the X Division Champion. Abyss being the X Division Champion is the most TNA thing I could ever think of. In our main event, Jeff Hardy, the current champion, with his purple championship immortal title after he threw the other title in the garbage can, will be defending that title against Rob Van Dam in a Falls Count Anywhere match. Oh look, RVD changed his singlet. Huh, that's interesting. Anyways, Jeff Hardy finish off, finishes off Rob Van Dam with, uh, what was it? What is that move called? Face Buster? Suplex Face Buster? Yeah. Suplex Face Buster and that's it. GG's. Jeff Hardy, the king of Immortal, is still the king of TNA. Now we go back to Impact where Jeff Jarrett, who has been awarded the television championship by Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff and their chicanery, takes on the Pope D'Angelo De Niro. In the end, Jeff Jarrett hits the stroke and defeats the Pope and unfortunately defeats the Pope because D'Angelo De Niro is cool as hell and Jeff Jarrett retains his title. And our next pay-per-view is called Against All Odds. Oh wait, what? We only have two matches? Oh, okay. The first one is for the Knockouts title as Gail Kim takes on Mickey James in a match that should be good. And it is! In the end, Gail Kim wins with the Celtic Cross to put down Mickey James and retain her title like she always does. And in the main event is the immortal Jeff Hardy defending his TNA Immortal World Championship against Mr. Anderson. Who, if you don't know, is an asshole. That's his, that's his gimmick. Isn't that kind of funny? Don't you get it? At the end of the match, Jeff Hardy went low and he was able to take advantage of that. He hit a reverse twist of hate and then a second twist of hate, not reversed. Jeff Hardy retains his title again. Eric Bischoff is there for some reason. I don't know why, but yeah. All right, the next impact, Desmond Wolf. Yeah, I remember him. Takes on Jeff Jarrett's Immortal for the TNA Television Championship. And in a shocking turn of events, Desmond Wolf hits a clothesline onto Jeff Jarrett and covers and pins Jeff Jarrett. Desmond Wolf has become the new TV champion and has had more success in this video than he ever had as his Desmond Wolf character in TNA. And now it's time for Destination X. Our first matches for the tag team titles is Bad Influence. Daniels and Kazarian take on the current champions, the Motor City Machine Guns. And after a match that went on way too long, like 30 minutes long, the match ends when Alex Shelley hits a spear and the two guys get in the ring, but they don't do anything. They just stand there. And then once the three count is made, Kazarian then tries to break it up, but it's too late. 
the guns retain not really surprising except the except the uh, the ending in our main event it's for the X division title as the monster abyss with with of course Hulk Hogan brother takes on Jay Lethal for the X division title now the first runaround in this match I was like why are these guys not pinning each other they, they've hit like 15 finishers the other and then I found out that for some reason the game switched it to no pinfall and no submission Meaning that there was no way that these guys could win on their own. They were just going to fight forever. Which is so cool. Thanks, 2K. So the match restarted. We restarted the match with pinfall. Abyss would hit a black hole slam onto Jay Lethal to pin him. Abyss wins and retains his title. Jay Lethal... Well, I guess he's been lethally... I don't even want to say that. <laughs> I was going to say lethally executed. But I honestly think I should just do like lethally eliminated. Fuck it. So on the next episode of Impact, Desmond Wolf is forced to defend his television title he just won against Immortal's Jeff Jarrett, who's on thin ice. But to make sure that Immortal wins the title, Hulk Hogan has put Bully Ray as the third man in this match for the triple threat. So what does Bully do? Well, he pile drives Jeff Jarrett and then power bombs the crap out of Desmond Wolf, and Bully Ray captures the television title. And Jeff Jarrett is on real thin ice now for that. And now we move on to Lockdown, where every match is a steel cage match. Our first for the Knockouts title it is a steel cage match, obviously, as Gail Kim defends her title against Terra. And after a back and forth fight, Terra is able to climb out of the cage, hit the floor, and become the new Knockouts champion. Don't... Our next match for the tag team titles is the Motor City Machine Guns are back as they defend against, well, originally it was supposed to be Ink Ink, which is Jesse Neal and Shannon Moore. I doubt anybody even knows who they are, but I do because I watched them as a kid. However, I couldn't find Jesse Neal, so I stood with, with Crimson. So, Crimson and Shannon Moore, known as Crimson Ink, are challenging for the tag titles inside of Cage. And just like the previous match, the Motor City Machine Guns are able to escape the- well, first off, Chris Saban escapes first, and then Crimson escapes second. And finally, Alex Shelley is able to get out, and the Guns once again retain their titles. Oh my god. And now it's the main event, it's Lethal Lockdown, not Workings. Lethal Lockdown. As Team Immortal, which consists of the Monster Abyss, the x Champion, the World Champion, Jeff Hardy, Hulk Hogan, and Ric Flair. Yep. Hogan and Flair still wrestling in 2010. As they take on Team TNA, which consists of Beer Money, Samoa Joe, and AJ Styles. And after a hellacious lethal lockdown match, yes, it's lethal lockdown, Jeff Hardy climbs to the top of the cage and leaps off onto Bobby Roode with a crossbody. Ric Flair, the sleazeball himself, is able to grab Samoa Joe and isolate him long enough so that Jeff Hardy could get the get the pinfall and Immortal defeat Team TNA, which sounds like the most TNA thing I could possibly think of in this era. And Immortal reigns supreme. On the next impact, Bully Ray as the new television champion. Desmond Wolf doesn't get a title shot because he's Desmond Wolf and he's a complete loser. And Jeff Jarrett is a failure, so Bully Ray is now taking the mantle as TV champion as he defends against Orlando Jordan. Oh, yeah, we don't we don't talk about that, do we? That's, is that that's Orlando Jordan? Yep, we don't talk about that. Bully Ray defeats Orlando Jordan, thank God, and Bully Ray retains his title, and that that's it. That's all you need to know. No more. In our next pay-per-view, TNA Sacrifice, where we have two matches to determine who will... Actually, no, I'll get into that later. Our first match is for the Fatal 4-Way... Fatal 4-Way. It is a Fatal 4-Way for the number one contendership of Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy is so cool and calculated that he doesn't even want to wrestle this week. As it's a Fatal 4-Way between Mick Foley, Kurt Angle, Matt Morgan... Yeah, the blueprint, Matt Morgan... And the icon Sting. And somehow Mick Foley was able to win this match. Mick Foley hit a mandible claw and made Sting pass out, giving Mick Foley the win. And now he's going to be going to Slammiversary to take on Jeff Hardy. 
And in the main event, Gail Kim is looking to get her title back as she decides to side with Immortal and Eric Bischoff. As she tries to get her title back from Tara, who's defending it in the main event of a pay-per-view. I know, a main event for the knockouts division in TNA is just mind-boggling. And despite Gail Kim's best efforts, she fell to a widow's peak from Tara. Tara retains the title and finally Gail Kim has to go to the back of the line instead of getting title shots left, right, and center. The impact before Slammiversary, the Motor City Machine Guns are actually defending their titles again. I know, they've done so well. They actually have done pretty well, not gonna lie. As they take on the team of the British Invasion, which is consists of Magnus and Rob motherfucking Terry. Yep. Rob Terry, Roy Terry, this freaking giant British muscular steroidy guy. God. And to the shock of everyone, even though the match went on way too fucking long, the British Invasion actually won. Yeah, the British Invasion, Roy Terry himself and Magnus became the new tag team champions. After Magnus did like an arm bar or something, I think, yeah. And I guess the pain was too excruciating for Shelly, so. But hey, look, Rob Terry is doing better in this video than he's ever done in his career. So, good job, Rob. And now we arrive at Slammiversary, where it's the big anniversary show for TNA Wrestling. Our first match is just a battle royal with eight TNA guys that aren't in any title matches. Bobby Roode, Jeff Jarrett, Austin Aries, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Osu Manic, Sharkboy, and James Storm. Austin Aries wins the Battle Royal in the end, and what does Aries get? I don't know, something maybe. Oh yeah, I also want to show off this like weird glitch. So depending on the ramp that you have in this game, if they can't go to the back, they'll just run in place for as long and long as long as possible until their render finally just disappears off the off the screen. I thought that was kind of funny. So, and our second contest is for the X Division title, as the Monster Abyss is once again defending his title. His reign of terror as he takes on an old school veteran in Jerry Lynn. Despite Jerry Lynn's best efforts, he would eventually fall just like everyone else has to the Monster Abyss after eating a black hole slam. Abyss is still the X Division champion. The reign of terror for the X Division is continuing on. Brother, I told you he was the right guy, dude. And in the main event is for the TNA Immortal Championship as Jeff Hardy, the champion, defends against the challenger, Mick Foley. And to the shock of everyone, Mick Foley is somehow able to get the mandible claw onto Jeff Hardy and make Jeff Hardy pass out, and Mick Foley becomes the world champion, upsetting everyone. So, there is no Impact this week, or for the next couple months, because Impact is under construction as we are doing a rebrand of sorts, so Impact is, the Impact Zone is currently closed. So we're just going to jump into the next pay-per-view. Our next pay-per-view is Hard Justice. It's hardcore. Everything gets hardcore on this night, you know? Get it? Our first match is for the tag titles. The Guns want to get their titles back as they take on Roy Terry and Magnus for the tag titles. And the AI are stupid and dumb. I don't know what they, they're doing. I guess they're drinking stupid juice or whatever. Because these two... These teams literally just fought on the outside for five minutes straight rather than getting inside the ring because there's no pinfalls on the outside of the ring. So for 20 minutes, this match went on. It could have ended at five, but the guns win. Thank God, Roy Terry can go back to retirement. In our main event, Jeff Hardy, the ringleader, not the ringleader, the face of Immortal is looking to get his title back. He lost against Mick Foley at um, Slammiversary. In an Extreme Rules match, which was a terrible idea because, just guess what happened? These two fought on the outside for 15 minutes. They finally got back in the ring and that's when the finish happened. So they just just fight on the outside for like for the entire match, 90% of the match. And then the 10% is like the finish. Jeff Hardy hits a Swanton Bond while Mick Foley is standing, which I've never seen, but interesting. And Jeff Hardy retains his title. However, Jeff Hardy got a surprise. The lights go out, and when they come back on, Sting is in the ring, maniacal as ever, and hits a death drop onto Jeff Hardy, and, and Sting is holding up the title 
as he maniacally laughs as the show closes. <laughs> we are now we now arrive at no surrender. We have two matches. Our first match is for the knockouts title. Now, Immortal being very upset about the fact that Terra is the champion, stacks the deck against her in every way possible. Why? Because they have Terra defend her title against three other people, and all of them are part of the beautiful people. Madison Rain, Angelina Love, and Velvet Sky. And their goal is that at least, at le if at least one of them wins the match, that's all that matters, because they'll be the triple champion, I guess. So... Terra just needs to lose to one of these women, and that's all that matters in the end. So, Velvet Sky hits a backstabber onto Angelina Love, and Madison Rain is able to take Terra out of the equation, and Velvet Sky is actually able to become the new Knockouts champion, thanks to the beautiful people. So now the main event, the Icon Sting, or Joker Sting, challenges the world champion Jeff Hardy for the Immortal Championship, and to the shock of everyone, Jeff Hardy gets squashed by Sting in three minutes. Sting hits the death drop and actually pins Jeff Hardy. Sting becomes the new champion, upsetting Jeff Hardy. And show goes off the air with the maniacal icon reigning supreme. And Jeff Hardy is on the outside moping around. Impact is back, and it's got a new it's got a new aesthetic to it. It's blue. And it's also now Impact Wrestling. It's not TNA anymore, so. We've rebranded to Impact Wrestling. And our first order of business, the TV title. Bully Ray, the current television champion, with Scotty Steiner in his corner, is taking on Mr. Tuesday, Thursday, Monday, Friday night. I don't know. I think it's Thursday. Rob Van Dam hits a five star off the top. Bully kicks out. So Rob just goes back up to the top. It's another five star! And defeats Bully Ray on the first episode of Impact Wrestling. RVD becomes a new TV champion. Our first match of the night is for the TNA Knockouts title. Velvet Sky with the rest of the beautiful people in her corner. Takes on Tara. And it goes as well as you expect. Tara hits a Widow's Peak onto Velvet Sky. Reclaims her title. The beautiful people are not beautiful anymore. Well, actually no, that might be a lie. And... Terra is still the champion, though, so that's all that matters. Our second contest is for the X Division title. Abyss in his reign of terror with Hulk Hogan in his corner and Immortal at, at his backing takes on Austin Aries. Yeah, remember the Battle Royal he won? Well, now Austin Aries is using his Option C Battle Royal to cash in for a title shot. And to the shock of everyone, Austin Aries actually does the unthinkable. He wins. He hits a springboard dropkick after hitting like five brain busters. To put away the monster abyss and Immortals ex Immortals monster has fallen finally and Austin Aries has saved the X Division. And our main event is for the TNA World Championship as the icon Sting. Oh also look at the uh, the purple. The purple strap matches the purple robe. That's kinda cool. Takes on Immortals Jeff Hardy. And just as just like previous month, Jeff Hardy fell once again to a death drop. Sting is still the TNA World Champion, and Immortal has completely collapsed in the span of a month. TV title gone, Knockouts title back in Terra's hands, X Division title gone, and TNA title gonzo. Immortal is done. Or are they? The next impact, RVD is now defending the TV title against Brian Kendrick. Why isn't Bully getting his title shot rematch? I don't know. Universe mode's a bitch. So, Brian Kendrick, yes, and he was also in TNA, yes, Brian Kendrick was in TNA at the time. But it just goes the same way as it did last month. RVD hits the 5 star on Brian Kendrick, and that's the end of THE Brian Kendrick. RVD is still Mr. TV Knights, and that, that's it. So now our final pay-per-view before Bound for Glory is Victory Road. Our first match is for the tag titles. Now, Immortal is not happy. So, they do what they would do in their best situation. Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan decided to team and challenge for the tag team titles because they believe that no one else in their group can. So, as Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair challenge the Motor City Machine Guns into 
the biggest into the biggest shock I've seen of this video. Hogan and Flair actually win. Ric Flair locks on the figure four leg lock onto Alex Shelley. Chris Saban tries to come in for the save, but Ric Flair kicks his ass. And then I guess and Ric Flair actually covers and pins Alex Shelley. I guess the pain of the figure four was too much for Shelley and he just passed out from the pain. And Hogan and Ric Flair of Immortal are the champions once again. Actually, no, not once again. They're the champions for the first time. A second match is Immortal's Abyss, or what's left of Immortal at this point. Takes on Austin Aries for the X Division title in a rematch. But the match ends in a no contest because both... Because Abyss throws Austin Aries over the barricade. And then... Austin Aries grabs Abyss and pulls him over the barricade and the two just fight in the crowd for five minutes and eventually just go to the back. They go to the back and we lost contact with them so the match is a no contest. Austin Aries is still champion and Abyss is not going to be happy with this result. And now the final impact before Bound for Glory. We open the show with a eight-man battle royal for the TV title. RVD defends against seven other amazing combatants that are true contenders for this championship and not just thrown together because we don't have anything else to do with these guys. And after, and the final two men in the match are Matt Morgan and RVD. And to the obvious disappointment of me, Matt Morgan throws RVD out of the ring, and Matt Morgan becomes the TV champion. Yeah, that's rough. In our main event of Impact, it's for the Knockouts title as Tara defends against Mickey James and Gail Kim in a triple threat. Tara is on the outside taunting, and Mickey James is pounding Gail Kim away. But Gail Kim actually hits an inside cradle onto Mickey James. Tara realizes it, but she tries to stomp Gail Kim, but her stomp misses, and Gail Kim actually pins Mickey James with the inside cradle. And Gail Kim, because of course she does, gets the title back that she had at the beginning of the year. Because she's Gail Kim. Like, what do you expect? Now it's time for Bound for Glory, the final pay-per-view of the year. We open up with a triple threat tornado tag, as beer money we're supposed to get a title shot at Bound for Glory against the guns. But because Hogan and, and Flair won, it complicated things. So, Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan... Oh my, look at this entrance, jeez. Ric Flair getting down and dirty. Hulk Hogan with the rose and bite. Okay, this is a little too much. Let me cut this. As So, Immortal defends against the Motor City Machine Guns. And after a chaotic fuck buggle... Is that a word? Fuck buggle? Well, it is now. It ends with when Alex Shelley and... Chris Sabin get Flair in the ring by himself. Sabin hits a cradle shock. Hogan tries to get in the ring, but Bobby Roode grabs him. And Alex Shelley is there to make sure no one's able to break it up. And the Motor City Machine Guns reclaim their titles. And just as they started out the, at, at the beginning of the year with the titles, they end the year with the titles. And now, our second contest for the x Division title. It's the rubber match between the Monster Abyss and the current champion, Austin Aries. Inside of the... Oh, wait... It's not the Hell in a Cell, right? Yeah, it's not the Hell in a Cell. That's a copyrighted... Uh, rage in the Cage? Yeah, that works. And a Rage in the Cage match. So This was a brutal Rage in the Cage match. And it ends when Austin Aries goes to the top, hits a Brain Buster, goes to the top rope, goes to the 450, but Abyss gets out of the way. Abyss hits him with a Black Hole Slam to pin Aries, and... Abyss is the only immortal member standing at the end of the year with a championship. As everybody else is, as immortal has crumbled, at least Abyss has done well. So Abyss is your champion. Again. In our main event of Bound for Glory, it's Sting with the new World Heavyweight Championship belt. Defends against the Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle, which is very eerily similar to the last video I did where that was the main event. What a weird coincidence, right? But unlike the last video where Kurt Angle won the championship, Sting was able to eke out Kurt Angle and retain his title in the main event of Bound for Glory with Joker Sting maniacally as champion. 
with the new title belt, it seems like Impact Wrestling is going in the in a new, brighter direction. Or are they? Um, yeah. If you watched the video, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, you know, all that jittery jazzy. And yeah, that's it. See you in Aces and Eights.